Industry doubts have followed SpaceX for years. They can't do Moon and Mars. Too ambitious. Spreading too thin. But Musk just revealed something that flips everything. The engineering challenges everyone sees as obstacles, they're actually the solution. Orbital refueling connects both missions. Landing precision, same technology. Life support systems, shared development. Five technical hurdles that seemed impossible are now unlocking two destinations with one vehicle. So here's what industry analysts missed. What if chasing the hardest problems is exactly how you solve both? Let's start with the challenge that determines whether either destination happens. Everything depends on solving this first. Starship burns most of its propellant just reaching orbit. That's not a design flaw, that's physics. A fully fueled Starship weighs roughly 5,000 tons at launch. By the time it reaches orbit, the tanks are nearly empty. Without refueling in space, neither the Moon nor Mars is reachable. Here's the problem nobody's solved. Transferring cryogenic propellants between spacecraft traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Liquid methane exists at minus 161 degrees Celsius. Liquid oxygen at minus 183 degrees. When you pump ultra-cold fuel into warmer tanks, some instantly evaporates. Those parasitic losses remain unknown, and they determine how many tanker flights SpaceX actually needs. Current estimates suggest at least 14 tanker launches to refuel one starship for lunar missions. But if parasitic losses run high, that could jump to 18 or 20 flights. Each additional mission adds time and risk. Cryogenic expert Paul Notardonato put it simply, Nobody really knows how many refueling missions they're going to have to do yet. SpaceX tested small-scale propellant transfer during IFT-3, moving liquid oxygen between internal tanks. Transferring hundreds of tons between separate spacecraft is fundamentally different. They're targeting mid-2026 for the first full demonstration, dependent on proving orbital rendezvous, controlled landing, and complete vehicle reuse first. What makes this critical is that orbital refueling isn't Moon-specific or Mars-specific. It's universal. Solve it once, unlock both destinations. That's why this single challenge sits at the foundation of everything. While tackling refueling, SpaceX is developing a specialized lunar variant called the Human Landing System. This reveals how they think about engineering differently than traditional aerospace. HLS looks like standard Starship externally, but it never returns to Earth. No heat shield, no atmospheric control surfaces, no re-entry systems. Removing that mass allows more propellant and cargo for lunar operations. Landing presents problems Apollo never fully solved. Lunar module exhaust kicked up massive dust clouds that reduced visibility and risked equipment damage. Starship is orders of magnitude larger, with far more powerful engines. The dust problem would be exponentially worse. SpaceX's solution uses mid-body thrusters that fire perpendicular to the main axis. When HLS reaches tens of meters from the surface, it shuts down main raptors and switches to distributed thrusters, 
reducing exhaust velocity and minimizing dust interference. Testing has been extensive. Full-scale landing leg drops, docking system validation using proven Dragon hardware, life support testing with crew-sized groups. By November 2025, SpaceX completed 49 development milestones. But credibility matters here. NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel stated the HLS schedule is significantly challenged and could be years late for 2027. That assessment came from Paul Hill, who spent decades directing mission operations at Johnson Space Center. These aren't critics. They're experienced engineers evaluating remaining work against available time. The same panel acknowledged SpaceX's high manufacturing rate and flight tempo as reasons they might succeed. The question isn't whether SpaceX can build HLS, it's whether they can do it fast enough while simultaneously preparing for Mars. Because Mars presents challenges that make lunar landing look straightforward, and SpaceX has never tested any of it. Mars has atmosphere, barely. Surface pressure equals 1% of Earth's, thick enough to create entry heating, but too thin for parachutes. Starship hits Mars' atmosphere at 7.5 kilometers per second. The heat shield must survive peak heating, then Starship flips, ignites engines, and executes powered landing with pinpoint accuracy. Everything happens autonomously, because Earth-Mars communication delay ranges from 4 to 22 minutes. No real-time control possible. SpaceX plans to land 150 tons or more per mission. Heavy industrial equipment, habitat modules, life support systems. That requires precision within tens of meters on unsurveyed terrain with untested systems. They're targeting 2026 for first attempts, with five uncrewed starships carrying Optimus robots. Musk's assessment? 50-50 chance of making it. If successful, crewed flights follow in 2029 to 2031. Here's the fundamental difference that changes everything. Mars launch windows open every 26 months when planets align. Miss one, wait two years. That contradicts SpaceX's entire philosophy of rapid iteration. Their answer reveals the real strategy. Test everything possible on Earth and Moon first. Use lunar missions to validate landing systems, life support, surface operations in an environment where you can iterate faster. Apply those lessons to Mars, where stakes are higher, but engineering overlaps significantly. This is where SpaceX diverges most from traditional aerospace. They've conducted 11 Starship integrated tests through January 2026. Some exploded, some broke apart, some succeeded. Each immediately taught lessons flowing into the next design. Production rate makes this possible. Starbase builds approximately one Starship every two to three weeks. Design changes get tested within months, not years. Compare that to NASA's Space Launch System. One flight in 2022, $4 billion per launch, maybe one flight annually. When you can only fly once yearly and must succeed, you design conservatively. SpaceX accepts early failures because failure generates data impossible to obtain otherwise. When Starship broke apart during Flight 9, engineers saw exactly what happens when systems encounter real flight conditions under maximum stress. This works because challenges overlap extensively. 
Orbital refueling serves both destinations. Life support functions everywhere. Landing precision helps both worlds. Raptor reliability matters universally. Every test teaches lessons applicable to multiple missions simultaneously. Starship Block 3, arriving early 2026, incorporates hundreds of changes from previous flights. Upgraded heat shields, improved thrust control, reinforced structures, refined software. Direct responses to observed failures, not theoretical improvements. The mid-2026 refueling demonstration is the critical gate. Success validates the entire architecture for both programs. Failure collapses timelines for both destinations. NASA already delayed Artemis III to mid-2027. Acting Administrator Sean Duffy stated in October 2025 that NASA might reopen the lunar contract. Blue Origin's Blue Moon waits as proven alternative. SpaceX runs parallel engineering programs on unprecedented scale. HLS for NASA, Mars testing, orbital refueling for both. Continuous starship iteration, improving everything simultaneously. Traditional aerospace would separate these into distinct programs with different teams and schedules. SpaceX bets everything on integration. One vehicle, shared technologies, parallel timelines. The engineering challenges analysts view as obstacles are forcing functions, problems so demanding that solving them creates capabilities valuable across multiple mission types. The next 18 months determine whether this integrated approach works or whether traditional aerospace wisdom about focus and specialization was right all along. Industry missed this. Engineering challenges aren't obstacles, they're the strategy. Solving orbital refueling, landing precision, life support for one destination unlocks both. Every moon problem solved makes Mars more achievable. Next 18 months answer everything. Like and subscribe to New Space Review for deeper analysis. Your take, genius or overreach? Comment below. Something's developing at Massey affecting Flight 12. Click the video on screen. Thanks for watching.